Thank you, colleague Lopez. Thank you very much, Mr. Lopez. That now brings us to the uh, situation in Belarus, says the President. Mr. Christoforou is the next speaker. Από αυτό το βήμα του Ευρωπαϊκού Κοινοβουλίου καταγγέλλω την Τουρκία για τις συνεχιζόμενες και κλιμακούμενες απειλές We condemn firmly Turkey for its threats, its uh, blackmail against Greece and Cyprus, which are members of the European Union. At the same time, I say to the European Union, if we do not take effective, determined measures to face up to Turkey's aggressions, it will be too late. If we in the EU think that solidarity is a basic value, then there's only one thing that we can do. We need to ask our member states, demand that our member states use the strength of the union to protect the external borders of the union, which are precisely those of Cyprus and Greece. I'd like to call upon my partners in the EPP as well to protect the position of Greece and Cyprus. Marcus Weber spoke earlier and he said that we need to put an end to the adhesion, uh, the accession speaks, sp uh, the accession uh, talks that we are having with Turkey because uh, that's the only way to put an end to the situation we're facing in Greece. Now it seems I made a mistake earlier that I said earlier that it would be the, on the situation in Belarus, but that's not actually correct. We're now talking about tu uh, Turkey and the situation in the Mediterranean. So I hope Mr. Christopher was not irritated by that. The next speaker is Mr. Sanchez Amor. Uh, Senor Hi, Representative. Mr. Borrell, the relation is extremely challenging and we have to be very clear on what we are addressing. When it comes to Turkey, we tend to compartmentalize and things are not linked up. We have, we should, at times we have offered the opportunity to be a member of this club and sometimes that does seem like a, par a punishment, but this is a candidate country that we're talking about. So the progressive alignment of Turkey with all of the key of the European Union, the human rights situation, well, we realize that there is a lack of trust, a lack of trust that actually is impacting all aspects of the relations. And we've seen that things have been uh, frozen because of human rights violations. And then when it comes to the visa fa facility, we have to keep in mind that things need to be uh, complied with for that to be able to make uh, progress. When it comes to the WTO, of course, there are issues related to that as well. And when the European Union uh, requests one thing and the opposite happens, we have to also look at the assertiveness that is taking place and perhaps the word assertiveness is, is not what used well. We must be solidary with Greece and Cyprus and we have to make sure that that is consistently being done. Thank you very much, Mr. Sanchez Amor. The next speaker is Mrs. Veltman. Thank you very much, dear President, esteemed High Representative. I have a question for you. I really wonder whether President Erdogan is still in favor of joining the EU. Don't you? Look at Turkey's recent actions. They go completely against all European values and interests. It's illegal driving activities in the territorial waters. It's violation of the UN arms embargo and it's intimidation against EU and NATO allies that are enforcing the Libyan arms embargo. Not to speak about its purchase of the Russian missile system and the arbitrary arrest of human rights activists, lawyers, judges and journalists. And, last but not least, its repeated threats and blackmail to open up the gates to Europe. And the list could go on. So to me, High Representative, Turkey's accession risk, it's a joke. Yes, Turkey is a strategic partner, both for Europe and NATO. It's a neighbor. And I do believe in the necessity of a strong partnership. But Turkey continues to move further away from the EU. This parliament has been clear about its position. This authoritarian Turkey cannot join the EU. I thank you for your efforts in continuing the dialogue with Turkey. 
But I also ask you to be very clear and frank to Turkey that there can be no upgrade of relations in whatever form as long as its actions do not change and as long as Turkey does not show readiness for serious reforms. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you very much, Mrs. Vautmann. For one and a half minutes, Mr. Mariani. Mr. President, merci. President, thank you very much. High Representative, how long are we going to put up with this situation? European civilization has an anomaly on its threshold. Uh, it's not just um, scuffles that we see from Erdogan, but almost a military conflict. So what do we want? It's a twofold challenge. The union of all Muslims are under the banner of um, fun Islam fundamentalism uh, in the Mediterranean. The Austrians, the Hungarians, the Greek, the Serbians, the Cypriots, the English, the French, and all sorts of other European nationalities have been facing this twofold challenge since the fall of Constantinople. The European Union is uh, preventing us, uh, preventing them in their historical vocation. But we can see that uh, Kosovo or other countries are becoming. Uh, Turkish uh, protectorates. Uh, in Libya, we are making exactly the same mistakes as we did in Syria. We're looking uh, with a benevolent eye on the militia which are paid by the Turks, but only a few days ago we saw an incident uh, which uh, almost appeared to be an act of war between the French and the uh, France and Turkey um, in the uh, maritime area, and uh, nobody said anything about this. So, how much longer, High Representative, are we going to put up with this? and uh, go ahead with this illusory process of accession of Turkey to the European Union, a country that does not share any of our values or projects. In this situation, I think the Europe should adopt a firm stance. If we want to save uh, peace and if we want to uh, salvage our borders, that then we have to make sure that they are not controlled in any way by Turkey. You really have to adopt a very firm stance, and we would very much hope that your name is not associated with Adelina and Chamberlain, I, those that show themselves to be weak. Thank you very much, Mr. Mariani. Mrs. Trick, for two minutes. Uh, thank you, and also, High Representative, thanks for your speech. The title of this security debate gives the impression that we deal with one evil factor in the Mediterranean responsible for all security threats. Such simple narrative is attractive, but not very helpful, as it leads us nowhere. The situation near our borders is highly complex, and the most worrying is the lack of influence that we have, both in Syria and in Libya, and this really should be reversed. But we will only gain more influence with a more regional and comprehensive approach. The people in Libya are overrun by many states who are competing for their own interests and influence, and the citizens of Libya really need our strong support for the establishment of a state where democracy, rule of law, and accountability prevail. Security threats will remain as long as Libya is a failed state. Turkey is one state interfering for its own interest over there, but so is Russia, France, Italy, and others. Compliance with the Berlin process is of, is of utmost importance, and it's disappointing that even EU member states don't always respect the agreement. So I ask the High Representative which possibilities he sees for increasing the effectiveness and expanding the scope of the Irini operation, despite the blockage of Russia in the Security Council. Apart from that, we should invest more in regional stability. And this starts with the region closest to us, and this is Cyprus. We need to find a solution for the conflict that we have neglected for so long. But also in North Africa, involving neighboring countries of Libya would really contribute to a more sustainable solution. I agree with Mr. Borrell that despite the bad track records of Turkey, we need, we share common interests and the neighboring country is key to us. We cannot simply remain in a deadlock and do as if we do not need to cooperate or narrow it down to the cooperation on the EU-Turkey statement. So I support his approach to rethink the strategy, but not only for security reasons, but also to promote human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Strick. For one and a half minutes, Mrs. Kankel. Thank you very much, Chair. Gas drilling in Cyprus. 
belligerence in the Eastern Mediterranean, annihilating Christian communities, buying a Russian-made S-400 missile system, threatening French ships, transferring jihadi fighters from Syria to Libya, blackmailing Europe with migrants if we do not support their actions in Syria. Colleagues, I have to ask, with friends like these, who needs enemies? The past few months have shown that Turkey under Erdogan cannot be a close and trusted ally of Europe. This is the behavior of an autocrat, and we cannot continue to entertain autocrats on Tuesday and then on Wednesday claim we are a continent based on democratic values. The time has come to admit that the current framework for our talks with Turkey, the membership framework, is completely out of touch with reality. It's time for a fundamental strategic rethink of EU-Turkey relations. We can have a relationship that is built on trade, but we should not be naive to the fact that both our values and interests are not converging. They are diverging. Friends do not behave the way that Turkey has been behaving. So if we cannot be friends, let's take the Turkish approach and have more transactional relationships. Maybe we cannot be friends, but Turkey needs to be a better neighbor, and you can do that. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kanko. For one minute, Mr. Georgiou. Thank you, President. Mr. Borrell, currently the Eastern Mediterranean is in flames. People are combating to split up the loot, and Turkey is aiming to be master of the region, currently is present in Iraq, Libya, and Syria. It is leveling threats against Greece, and Turkey is violating the exclusive economic zone of Cyprus. When the European Union makes statements, what does Turkey do? It states that it is going to instrumentalize the migrants and release flows of migrants. It is not just Greece that is under threat. It is the credibility of the entire European Union that is been being undermined. Without any strong sanctions or lasting solutions for the problems of the region, Turkey will continue to threaten Europe itself. Is that what we would like? Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mr. McAllister for one minute. Mr. President, thank you, dear colleagues. The recent Turkish escalations in the Mediterranean and the violation of the territorial integrity of Greece and Cyprus are challenging our partnership. As European Parliament today, we should once again make very clear that Turkish activities like the illegal drilling in the exclusive economic zone of Cyprus, the violations of Greek airspace, or the attacks on the Greek border are simply unacceptable. Turkey must take concrete steps to de-escalate the current situation. I would like to thank the High Representative, Josep Borrell, for his initiative to start to restart a dialogue with Turkey. Indeed, Mr. High Representative, we need to talk urgently. We need to talk urgently on the basis of firm principles and fully united as EU 27. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McAllister. The next speaker is Mr. Pitrula. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. High Representative, we have repeatedly criticized Turkey for its drilling activities in Cyprus, exclusive and economic zone, tensions it causes in the Aegean Sea and, and its engagement in Libya. Finally, the Council has decided that a regime of restrictive measures should be put in place against Turkey, which S&D Group supports. The list of open issues with Turkey continues over Turkish maritime claims and violation of Greek airspace that have led to significant deterioration in relations between Greece and Turkey. 
Turkey has also been continuously interfering in Libya's internal affairs, violating UN embargo and undermining the efforts to find a political solution under the auspices of the United Nations. We call on Turkey to show restraint, respect the sovereign rights of Cyprus and refrain from any such illegal action. If the Turkey legal actions continue, the European Union must respond appropriately in a full solidarity with the Cyprus and Greece as a European Union members. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pitzula. For one and a half minutes, Mrs. Loiseau. Monsieur le représent High Representative, only a few days ago, you were saying that the situation between Turkey and the European Union was far from being ideal, and I quote, you know you are familiar with the charm of diplomatic language and sometimes you just have to call a spade a spade. For far too long, the Turkish regime has turned its back on our values, in particular on human rights. And now, far too often, Turkey is running counter to our interests through its presence in Syria. It has weakened the fight that the coalition is uh, waging against Daesh. There are illegal drilling operations uh, off the coast of Cyprus, Cyprus violating international law and uh, undermining the sovereignty of both Greece and Cyprus. It sends Syrian mercenaries, some of them who are jihadists, to Libya. So this runs counter to the Berlin process, and they are increasing the risk of a petition of the country. We know that on the 10th of June there was a skirmish between a Turkish vessel against a French vessel in the uh, Mediterranean, a French vessel that was there within the context uh, of uh, an operation to re make sure that the respect against Libya was being, uh, an embargo was being respected. So these actions cannot be without consequence. So we have to move away from diplomatic language uh, when we're talking to Ankara now. So what we're expecting of you, High Representative, is uh, tough language. Thank you very much, Mrs. Loiseau. The next speaker is Mr. Sofo. Thank you very much, President. High Representative, since 2002, We've given to Turkey more than 16 billion euros to prepare it for membership of the EU and to uh, have them manage our immigration problem. We've allowed Erdogan to blackmail us against the threat of chaos. In the Mediterranean, Turkey's uh, offensives are causing chaos and their NGOs are indoctrinating people in a neo-Ottoman ideology. The EU has seemed to have so much trouble helping Italy, uh, but it, uh, you, we should be asking what those 16 billion were for. It didn't help the European project, but it was helped Erdogan's uh, imperial project. It's suicide to outsource European border management to the forces that want to weaken Europe. It's utopian to try and stabilize the Mediterranean with someone who wants to conquer it. The solution, therefore, is not to continue to kiss the feet of Turkey, but to politically reinforce Italy, France, Spain, and Greece, politically and economically, which are the only real custodians of the security and future of Europe in the Mediterranean. If we want to stabilize the Mediterranean... Mr. Burzelager is the next speaker for one and a half minutes. Dear Chair, dear Mr. Borrell, as Chancellor Merkel said yesterday, we cannot look away. We must address the European crisis of migration and asylum. And yes, we must establish security. But what is security? As long as EU countries are closing down their harbors to migrants and refugees, there is no security in the Mediterranean. As long as COVID-19 is being used to create de facto detention camps on the Greek islands, there is no security in the Mediterranean. As long as EU money is being used to fund Libyan coast guards and to circumvent asylum law, there is no security in the Mediterranean. Security in the Mediterranean can only be reached by applying asylum and maritime law, by allowing people to disembark after days on freighters, and by relocating people out of the camps on the Greek islands. Day by day, we endanger the lives of human beings, of brothers and sisters, as our Christian Democrat friends should say. But we can change and we can learn from our mistakes. First, we need to set up a European asylum system that is centered around the right to asylum and around the asylum interview. And second,
we must acknowledge that we are a continent of immigration and we must create new channels, new pathways and create new opportunities for people to enter the European Union. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Borsalaga. For one and a half minutes, Mr. Fragkos. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Today, here we are in the European Parliament speaking about the security in Eastern Mediterranean. Security that everyone who is listening to us knows, knows that Turkey is the single threat to that security. We are threatened whilst Turkey targets the mineral wealth of Greece, uh, violates the EEZ of Cyprus, and does not respect human rights. Nonetheless, Mr. Borrell goes to speak with his uh, counterpart on the subject, and Turkey is apparently prepared to negotiate with uh, Turkey the uh, splitting up the territorial wealth of Greece. We have seen that Turkey is turning its back to democracy and is using six- and seven-year-old children as martyrs for the purposes of carrying out the objectives of Turkey. What can you say about that situation? Greece would like very much for us to stop assisting Turkey and stop dialogue with the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Frakos. For one minute, Mrs. Demirel. Thank you, Mr. Borrell. Yes, the escalation in the Mediterranean is of concern. The rhetoric between the Greek side and the Turkish side is increasing. And we've seen that Erdogan is losing support in the population. There is an economic and political crisis, uh, one moving into the next. And this is why Erdogan is now focusing on his military strength. And this is what leads to the incidents in the Mediterranean and what's going on in Libya. Yeah. Colleagues, you're quite right when you get angry about Erdogan and the violations of human rights. You're right to be concerned about Libya. So why, but then why do you stick to the refugee agreement with uh, Erdogan. You talk about an arms embargo uh, to be respected through the Operation Irini, but there are still weapons that are moving around. So please stop the arms exports to Turkey uh, from our member states. That would be a lot easier. If you take a look at the whole debate, the whole confrontation, it's an issue of gas and oil. It's not only the AKP, but France and Italy are also involved on different sides of this uh, because of their own oil companies. All troops should leave. Thank you very much, Mrs. Demirel. The next speaker for one minute is Mr. Forlas. Thank you very much. Well, do we allow someone to attack us, insult us? Well, the only solution, the only result, rather, is that the situation is going out of control. Turkey is a candidate country for the European Union. How is it possible it is trying to negotiate with you whatever it wants? And it's a country that is threatening other European Union countries, including one uh, whose territory it has occupied. And it is now illegally drilling in their waters. So are, do we, are we sure that we have right on our side? Yes, of course we have. So let's be concrete, let's be pragmatic, and let's act rather than just uh, spouting words. We need a European Union. Uh, that does not submit to Mr. Erdogan's blackmail. It is time we put our values into uh, action and not our economic values. Thank you. Mr. Andrew Lackis, for one minute. A large part of the political class in Turkey is investing heavily in populism and escalation. Mr. Erdogan is now opening up subjects that were resolved with the Treaty of Lausanne. Mr. Erdogan would like to be able to have a stronghold over Greece, Syria, 
Libya and recently in a statement that was made um, that was uh, full of uh, venom he would like to take Hagia Sophia and turn it into a mosque and thereby stealing it from believers of the Christian world around the world and there are illegal actions in the Cyprus EEZ if all of this continues we know that this will be the end of the customs union with Turkey we've stated that Europe needs Turkey but we need peace and it's been interrupted thank you very much Mr. Rivier, now for uh, Mrs. Uh, Rivier. Well, thank you very much, High Representative. In Syria, in Libya, now Greece and Cyprus. In this hemicycle and in Europe in general, we very often thought that Turkey's attitude was a far away problem, a problem in the Mediterranean. But on the contrary, it is a, an issue of concern to all of us and represents a major political challenge which uh, obviously affects all of us in the European Union. We're talking about uh, the law of the sea, international law, and Europe seems to be watching what's going on rather than acting. There's the Libyan conflict, and it is a humanitarian uh, disaster. So in the face of these risks, uh, humanitarian issues, we can see that Europe continues to be powerless and divided. Once again... President Erdogan is uh, facing, making us face our own inertia. Europe cannot allow Turkey to gain control of the eastern and uh, uh, central uh, Mediterranean. So, Mr. Burrell, now in Greek, the European Union must act immediately. Thank you, Mrs. Zaharopoulou. And now, Mr. Riviere. Thank you. Three times now, a fr French frigate has been a attacked by Turkish uh, vessels. That's uh, an act of aggression. France has suspended its participation in the NATO and Mediterranean mission, but the Parliament and Council have not responded. They are institutions that are basically uh, at the feet of Erdogan. He's uh, blackmailing us with migrants, using it as a means of exerting pressure on the EU. Is working together with jihadism in uh, uh, Syria and is massacring the Kurds. But nothing is being done. Europe's submission to the Turks is total. We continue to uh, negotiate accession with uh, the uh, Ottoman uh, autocrat. And, uh, Commissioner, you mentioned Cyprus and Greece and now France to defend themselves. The Greek army is alone in trying to defend the European uh, uh, external border. I've seen the uh, mined bridges over the river and things like that. So I think that we really need to uh, change our relationship. Thank you, Mr. Riviere. And now for one and a half minutes, Mr. Dambaski. Thank you. Distinguished High Representative, I wonder what else needs to be done so that Erdogan's policies are actually well understood. He's waging a war against Kurds on his own territory. He's waging a war in Syria and Libya. He's trying to occupy the Mediterranean. Today, the Turkish newspapers have announced that a decision has been taken already to turn St. Sophia into a mosque. And let me remind you, St. Sophia or St. Sophia is the mother of all churches. This is how it is known. What else needs Erdogan to do so that you can see behind the facade? When are you going to really understand that Turkey is not a European country and it will never turn into a European country in terms of territory or civiliz civilization or culture or politics. Why do we go on with this circus of negotiating a future membership of Turkey? Why is it that we fund Turkey in a way and help him with his policies distinguished high representative one thing is clear 
these negotiations should be stopped as soon as possible and please try to stop turning Saint Sophia into a mosque. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Morel for one minute. Well, will we continue to just stand by when Turkey continues to provoke us in the Eastern Mediterranean? There was a Turkish uh, frigate that was extremely ex aggressive to a French naval vessel that was working under the auspices of NATO. I think that this should call all of us to attention, and unfortunately there wasn't an overwhelming reaction. We have seen that there has been very little in terms of the uh, alliance, uh, Atlantic alliance, and there's been very little to be done uh, considering this uh, brain death. We continue to talk about the fact that Europe is, um, lacks power, and it comes down to us as, as Europeans to really recognize the fact that we allowed Turkey to continue its conquest of power in the region. Let us remember Syria. We were not able to assist our Kurdish allies. Let us look at what is happening in Libya. Yes, we know that Mr. Erdogan is availing of our weakness, of our hesitation, of our uh, lack of ability to decide. But we owe it to us and to the Turkish uh, people that we do not become uh, embroiled in this. Thank you very much, Mr. Morel. One minute, Mr. Salini, for one minute. Thank you very much, President. High Representative, you talked about the relationship between Turkey and the European Union and said uh, that uh, there were negative trends. Well, maybe you could uh, speak with less naive language. What's happening between Turkey and the European Union is not a negative trend. No. It's a lack of respect for the normal rules of institutional cooperation. What has happened is, is not the consequence of a, a request for accession. No, it's a, a, a question of a, applying a neo-Ottoman strategy uh, that we've seen applied in Gr Cyprus, in Greece, but also in Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria and Libya. They want to replace Europe in the Mediterranean. Well, I remember the words of a great uh, Italian uh, politician, Aldo Moro. He described this situation as Europe not as a continent in the Mediterranean, but Europe is the Mediterranean. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Salini. Mrs. Insee, for a minute. Yes, does it work? Perfect. Herr Tallman. President, Erdogan and his government in Turkey are a threat. A threat to the population in Turkey, a threat to the population of the Middle East, and a threat to Europe. Turkey's actions have been alarming for quite some time now, and they are leading to escalating conflicts in the Middle East and North Africa region, and they risk further new conflicts in the Mediterranean region. In Turkey, Erdogan is... Uh, striking hard against the opposition with threats, hate and violence. In the Rojiva region in the Syrian Kurdistan, Erdogan's bombs are falling over the population and incursions against Greek waters and uh, airspace together with occupation of northern Cyprus and drilling in Cyp Cyprus's exclusive economic zone. All of this are a crime against international law. And we also see Erdogan's threats, hate and violence are continuing to spread from, to, from one country to another in Europe. Erdogan-controlled co media have uh, carried out a witch hunt against three Swedish Social Democrat colleagues. Vice President and High Representative Joseph Borrell, dialogue is always important and your, report, uh, your visit to Turkey last week was important, but how long can we continue to mollycoddle Turkey? Thank you very much. Mr. Zimniok, now for one minute. Present. Thank you, President. If we take a look at the migration crisis, it's been spreading since 2015, and neither the Commission nor the pro-Europeans around Angela Merkel were willing to take the necessary measures in order to solve this problem. 
empty words and uh, slogans don't help. We have uh, opted for a position of the weak partner, and we're being uh, oppressed. We're being blackmailed now. There is war in Syria against the Kurds by Erdogan, and uh, we see what's happening with the hardcore terrorists in Italy. And then if we've got the immigration mafia operating in Greece, and Erdogan is not only controlling the so-called Balkan route, but its military presence in Libya also means that he controls the routes through the Mediterranean. And Erdogan is not the solution. He is the problem. And I think we really re have to react in a language he understands. We have to deny any kind of support, and uh, we have to turn off the uh, economic tap. We have to close our external borders and end the uh, criminal um, actions on the Mediterranean route. Thank you very much, Mr. Zimniok. I'd now like to hand the floor to Mr. Fidanza for one and a half minutes. In 50 years, Turkey will be one of the strongest powers in the world, working towards greater and greater achievements. And that was what was said about Erdogan. Uh, that was what was said by Erdogan in front of the parliament in Ankara. And the idea is that it's going to be a neo-Ottoman empire that is increasingly strong, and specifically with the the, the acts against uh, Kurds in Syria, and then the what's happening in Cyprus, as well as what's happening in. Libya with the government in Libya, and then using the pressure of uh, migration, migratory flows through the current Libyan human traffickers and Algerian as well. Meanwhile, Europe vacillates, and we have seen that there is a influence also of Turkish citizens that have been called on to continue to uh, colonize Europe via births of children and everything that's happening from Sudan to Somalia, as you can see what's happening recently by uh, Shabab after the Turkish mediation and the release of, uh, of uh, people who were kidnapped. Now, we do, Fratelli d'Italia believes that Turkey is not a part of Europe, not in the way that we conceive of Europe, geographically or culturally, and we have to continue to str to work against the membership of Turkey once and for all, no accession to the European Union. Thank you, Mr. Fidanza. I'd now like to hand the floor to Mr. Wallace for one minute. Thanks, President. Turkey is now a lawless state. It's pushing forces on the ground in Iraq against the will of the Iraqi government. It encroaches on the sovereign territory of Syria whenever it feels like it. It's ignoring a UN weapons embargo in Libya. But Turkey couldn't do what it does in northern Iraq and Syria without a green light from the United States. And sadly, the EU is subservient to the US. We hear so much about European values, but we're playing a pitiful role in the region. The Caesar sanctions introduced by the US are a blanket punishment of the people of Syria, and we're saying nothing about it. And yet, we're happy to support war criminals like Bin Salman and Netanyahu. Mr. Borrell, you talk about Turkey showing solidarity uh, because they're uh, blocking up three and a half million refugees first. What's the future of the, Syri of the refugees? Are they going Europe doesn't want them. They're not going to stay in Turkey forever. Why don't you work with Syria and ignore the, the threats from the U.S.? Because until Syria recovers, the, the refugees can't go back. They even don't, it looks like now that you don't want them to go back. Cut on to yourselves. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Mr. Mandel, for one minute. Thank you, President. Yes, thank you very much, President. Well, this pandemic should have taught us that humanity needs to hold together and the citizens of Turkey have the same value as any human being around the world. But the leadership of Turkey, that may be or may not be supported by the majority, are doing a lot of things very badly. Right from uh, the Favoritan district of my uh, home country, Vienna, through to Libya, there is an escalation instead of a de-escalation, which is the lesson that I th thought we should all have learned from the pandemic. The weapons embargo against uh, Libya is being uh, 
got around by a NATO member who was also spreading bad blood across the, Romani the, the Mediterranean. And they are uh, also trying to interfere inside Europe. There has to be an end with the pre-accession assistance and accession talks because the Turkish government has signaled for a long time that they are not ready for Europe. Mandel is full. Thank you, Mr. Mandel. Mr. Mavridis. Thank you, President. I think today it is important for us to debate the illegal actions of Turkey within the European Union and in the Mediterranean, in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, in particular. But that is not enough. If we take a look at history, Mr. Burrell, and take a look at the mistakes that have may been made in the past, these are repeated because we don't draw the necessary lessons. And perhaps I can refer to one of these. And this was uh, appeasement vis-a-vis -vis Nazism in Europe. Well, as a result of that, policy, we ended up paying a very high price in terms of murders, assassinations, because we had not properly learnt the lessons uh, from our mistakes. So I think it's a question of the credibility of the European Union that it is at stake, uh, Mr. Burrell. In the uh, Eastern Mediterranean. So are we going to just continue? We've heard that Germany, uh, we know that Germany is send, selling weapons to Turkey and they're going to be using these against the values of the European Union. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mavridis. Now for one minute, now Mrs. Donato. Grazie. Thank you. Dear High Representative, in your report, you invite the Turkish government to dialogue, stating that you are extremely accommodating to a regime that violates human rights and international law. We have to look at the Syrian crisis. We, we've seen so many casualties and refugees, and we've seen that Erdogan has worked with Syrian terrorists that have used mercenaries and violated the arms embargo and in fact also taken millions from the EU when it comes to the refugee statement and now they would like to have a free uh, a blank slate for what they would like to do in the eastern Mediterranean we have seen that there is so much aggressivity towards Cyprus and Greece and a violation of human rights with an authoritarian regime that snuffs out any type of uh, Kurdish or Christian sentiment. We have seen that the EU has been shamefully inert, uh, slow and inactive, and we must have sanctions ending any type of collabor collaboration. Thank you, Mrs. Donato. The next speaker for one minute, Mrs. Mr. Buxade Vialba. Gracias, Presidente. Thank you, President. Mr. Burrell. The crisis that uh, was experienced uh, last, last March uh, led to thousands uh, of uh, refugees on the borders, uh, and we can see what's going on now in the Cyprus and Greek. And there were threats that were uh, proffered when you visit Ankara uh, only recently. And there was a lack of political will here in the European Parliament, in the European Union, and uh, a lack to properly respect uh, the values that underpin the European Union. And all the members of VOX sent a letter to you asking to suspend the payments, uh, which uh, amount to millions, uh, to Turkey. Uh, we know that, uh, obviously, uh, you and uh, the, the, gov the uh, government in Spain is uh, continuing to support this, and we're uh, sending uh, hundreds of thousands of millions to a country that we should not continue to consider as a partner. Uh, they're not uh, uh, collaborating and they're not helping control illegal immigration. So we would urge you to suspend all payments to third countries that do not co collaborate when it comes to uh, our mig migratory policies and that we um, prevent once and for all Turkey ever becoming a member of the European Union. Thank you, Mr. Bouchardé Vialba. Mrs. Zofka, one minute. Honourable High Representative, dear colleagues, coming from a Mediterranean country, I can rightly say that this cradle of European civilization plays a crucial role for security and well-being of all European citizens. When its security is threatened, we must react like one.
We feel the menace that our European compatriots in Greece and Cyprus are facing from the provocative actions by Turkey. These actions are violating international law and creating tensions and conflicts with the European Union. In recent months, we have seen similar behavior regarding the refugee crisis and the attacks on European borders. That time, we have sent a strong message that we stand strong and united in protecting our borders. This behavior should stop immediately. I call for dialogue and search for a European solution, as it is only by a dialogue that we can avoid further escalation that history does not forgive. Mediterranean has, without saying, the most important world shared heritage. We call on Turkey to take on board European values in order to find a way how to build a shared future between us. Thank you, Mr. Zofko. Mr. Schieder, for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, President, the High Representative, Mr. Erdogan is moving with ever greater steps away from European values. Well, in fact, he's already moved such a long way away completely from human rights and uh, international law. European uh, members of parliament, journalists, uh, uh, and in, uh, let alone in Turkey, the number of people who are being attacked or even sent to prison. In Vienna, the grey wolves were, uh, were sent out onto the streets by Erdogan too. And through foreign policy, through Turkish air attacks on Libya, Syria and the Kurds, the Turkish Navy's actions, which have been aggressive against uh, uh, Cyprus and are on their way towards Libya. So the question is, is Turkey a partner? Can it be a partner? Can it be a member of the Council of Europe? Can it uh, uh, not be possible that we have uh, uh, sanctions imposed and a closing off of the accession negotiations? Thank you, Mr. Schieder. Mr. Bardella, one minute. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. President. A Turkish vessel that uh, threatens a French naval vessel where there was a control of Kargori on the arms embargo towards Libya, and then we've had incursions into Syria as well as uh, complicity with uh, Daesh. Is there and then we have the issue of Hagia Sophia and transforming it into a mosque. Is there any question left what uh, Erdogan's intentions are? Last March, there was a, on the border of, between Greece and Turkey. I had a chance to visit that, and what I saw was that we have abandoned Greece to uh, Turkey because of the horrible blackmail that is being leveled against Europe because of that, and there's been an abdication there. The European Union, more than ever, needs to put an end to this foolish game where you have been playing into the hand of Erdogan for too long. It is no longer acceptable. We have to have economic sanctions to begin with the suspending every single type of economic assistance that is going to Turkey with the money from the French and the rest of the European citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nabardella. Mr. Bellamy, for one minute. President, in 1935, Mustafa Kemal made, turned St. Sophia into a museum uh, which uh, represented the heritage of uh, Turkey and accessible to the world. And uh, Mr. Erdogan wishes to turn it now into a mosque, and I think the message is quite clear. If we take a look at what the uh, government is doing by denying the uh, genocide of uh, Armenians. Everything that they're doing is, uh, serves a, a policy for their future, and we have to react, because what's going on in Turkey, what they're doing, is not only worrying for the Middle East, but also for Europe, because we see these very serious incidents in the Mediterranean. And I'd like to give my support to the Cypriots, the Greeks, uh, who are suffering and we seem to be powerless to react. I don't think uh, we should be sending this money to Turkey, which we could usefully use uh, for our farmers. I think we have to move out of our denial and put an end to the process of accession to the European Union, which is uh, absurd. Thank you, Mr. Bellamy. Mr. Majorino, now for one minute. Thank you, President. 
Well, in Turkey, in Erdogan's Turkey, we're facing an authoritarian spiral, a lack of respect for democratic values, the removal of uh, democratically elected mayors and members of the opposition, and uh, representatives of civil society. This is all incompatible with our values. And Erdogan, it's not just a problem because of what he's doing inside Turkey, but because uh, of what he's doing outside its borders. Just think about the terrible situation in Libya and in Syria, or the suffering of the Kurdish population. And the way he's using refugees uh, with regard to uh, the European countries. So, faced with all of this, what is the role of Europe? What is our responsibility? We have to condemn Erdogan. Yes, certainly. And we need to do so in a clear manner. But we also need to be aware that, uh, aware that Erdogan has co gone into a vacuum, a vacuum left open by the st lack of strategy on the part of Europe, particularly in the central Mediterranean, and a, a lack of a global policy of promoting human rights. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayorino. Now for one minute, Mr. Maimarakis. Micro, micro, micro. We all would like to have good relations with Turkey, but we have reservations about that. It has to be guaranteed that Turkey is going to uphold human rights and not violate them, as has recently been the case. Otherwise, there is no room for dialogue. Were we to be laxist towards Erdogan, then that would mean that he can blackmail us and level extortion. And then we have the issue of Hagia Sophia with the plan to transform it into a mosque, which is a spit in the face uh, to Christianism and Christianity and our culture. There was also the refusal to address the issue that Erdogan was humiliating in, towards Michel and von der Leyen in the press conference. You've heard him insult three member states, and you did not have the reaction that was necessary. You have also absolved Turkey. You should have been more stringent and said that... Thank you, Mr. Maimarakis. For one minute, Mrs. Asimokopoulou. Thank you, President. Mr. Borrell, when Mrs. Merkel addressed the hemicycle, she paid tribute to the role of the members of the European Parliament, and that referred to the decisions, what we do on behalf of our citizens. So how can I explain to my citizens in Thrace, in parts of uh, the part of the region where I come from, how can I explain to them the, f the fact that they are being talked about as murders of children? How, how can I explain the illegal drilling operations? And how can I explain the fact that a foreign minister threatens the European Union? What do all of you do? You smile. You offer them um, uh, gel sanitizer to disinfect his hands. And so instead of sanctions, that you want to talk about respectful dialogue. So please don't smile. It's not laughing matter. Thank you very much, Mrs. Asimakopoulou. For one minute, Mr. Kelly. When Brexit started first, many people in Ireland felt that the European Union would throw Ireland under the bus at the last moment to appease the British. That did not happen. We were shown wonderful solidarity, which was much appreciated. And I think that solidarity is now needed in relation to Greece and Cyprus, where a powerful neighbour is violating the Greek airspace and drilling illegally close to Cyprus. I think we need to send a strong message to Turkey that it cannot continue violating the sovereignty of our member states, that all member states are equally important to us. And if they do not react properly, then we have to take whatever actions are necessary to stand up for our member states. Europe's strength is its unity. 
That unity we showed in relation to the Brexit and the withdrawal agreement must now be shown in relation to Cyprus and Greece. Come on, group one. Thank you very much, Mr. Kelly. Mrs. Spiraki. Thank you very much, President. Well, High Representative, you were saying, Mr. Borrell, that Greece has negotiated uh, its, uh, sorry, uh, its uh, exclusive economic zone. Uh, with Italy and with Egypt. And if there's a lack of respect, then there's a, uh, there will be a, uh, a referral to The Hague. Well, Turkey is putting uh, international law it, uh, into question. The question of the economic zone between uh, Turkey and Greece is not just an issue between those two countries. It's a question of the interest of the European Union as a whole. We need to clearly explain our position on the uh, uh, exclusive economic zones, and we need mutual negotiations or a referral to The Hague. Thank you very much, Mrs. Spiraki. We'll be concluding this part of the debate with Mrs. Junivicene. Thank you. Situation in the southern EU neighborhood is dangerous. It has to be seen in a wider context, not just in relation with Turkey. There are a lot of talks about EU strategic autonomy in security area. The process is developing in the Mediterranean for several years now confirm that we have to act, not only talk. When the EU is not acting, others do. In this case, Turkey and Russia. Even more so, as different EU members support different sides of the conflict in Libya. Where is the EU strategy here? Today we have to speak about capability of the EU to act near its borders, to act in coordination with NATO. This would be the kind of EU strategic autonomy in which our voters could believe. Thank you, Mr. 